So. Oh, now you are coming. That means I have to speak English, right? <laughs> Oder Deutsch, aber Deutsch geht doch auch für dich ganz gut. No, 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 no. Not so good Deutsch. Na, dann müssen wir doch Englisch machen. So, then, no problem, actually, then. Um, please give me a Canto 10 first part. No, right, on the right side. 10, 1. Um, ich habe noch gar nichts gemacht. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Chana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Gopi Chana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamunati Ravanachari, Yamunati Ravanachari. So, my dear friends, listeners, devotees, viewers on the internet, and today we uh, will talk about something very nice. Yesterday I wanted to speak on the Krishna book, and I gave some introduction, and I went a little bit more into the philosophy and development of bhakti and uh, but today i want to uh, read with you a pastime of krishna pastime means like a you know, adventure like a leela and there are so many in the in the tenth canto of course 90 chapters and so many activities of krishna so we will choose one which is also uh, explained by Srila Prabhupada because Srila Prabhupada was translating the Srimad Bhagavatam only until 10th canto, 13th chapter. And 13th chapter because, no, 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 I, I say he translated until there because then he left. Right? But he gave before already in the 60s, I think, yeah, in the end of 60s, he gave this 10th canto in a summary form, right? In, a, uh, in this Krishna book. But then when he came, until the translation of the Bhagavatam to the 10th canto, he continued. He was thinking also the Sanskrit verses and commentaries. So, but he could only do this until 13th chapter. So, I want to read uh, this 13th chapter. Um, let's see how far we can come. I will just read the Sanskrit, maybe the first verse also Prabhupada's um, purport. Um, the pastimes of Krishna are very amazing. And especially his, his Rindavan pastimes are very amazing uh, because there is he shows his um, mood with his loving devotees where there is no understanding of his being God because this is actually from the um, point of view of an hierarchy of love less. Because you can love Krishna more if you, if you don't know that he's the Lord. <laughs> but at the same time in the Leela are sometimes demigods or devotees or personalities who know that he's God. They know that he's God and they are then very bewildered. Because they will think, oh, what, what is our Lord God doing? Right? Because he behaves like, one, uh, like a coward boy. And then very often the devotees or the demigods are like bewildered. Is this really our Lord? And I will, we want to read the pastime which is in connection with this. So I, I give you the short preview, no, not preview, what is it? Vorgeschichte, pre-story, pre pre, prequel, it's called, no, sequel, prequel, I think it's called. <laughs> and um, it was like this. And Krishna was in the forest with his friends, the cowherd boys, the gopas. And um, they, they ran through the forest and had lots of fun. And suddenly they saw in the middle of Rindavan a huge cave. A big cave. And they said, oh, this looks like fun. Because the boys, they always want to have fun and adventure. And they run around, they jump around, they climb on trees, they swim in the water. They imitate, imitate the animals, they play with Krishna, they wrestle with Krishna, they take prasadam with Krishna, they, um, they herd the cows, right? They have just fun all day long. Hare Krishna, we have a new sannyasi. <laughs> prasadam sannyasi. <laughs> there seems to be some problem somewhere. <laughs> So, <laughs> he, show, he, he cannot, he cannot uh, come to lecture, he has some work. 
This looks like uh, the serious work. Yeah. Anyway, this is all recorded. So they were running. So this is what the card was. This is the mood, the rasa, no? the mellow of Krishna with his friends. No? So and they ran to the forest and come to a huge cave, a huge cave. And they say, oh, this looks lots of fun. But actually, this cave looks like a big snake. Or they saw a snake and thought, oh, it looks like a cave. <laughs> it looks like, oh, this is a big snake. Because, and it's long. And it's probably lying there and pretends to be a cave. That we go inside and it can kill us. But we, are, we want to go inside because it looks like lots of fun. And if it wants to kill us, Krishna is there and will protect us. They knew Krishna will always protect us. So they thought, oh, we will have some fun. They ran inside. Of course, Krishna is standing outside and he views this. He looks at this and says, oh, this is a problem now because this is a demon. Actually, it was in, uh, in the third canto. There is a talk between Vidura and Uddhava. And they remember, especially Uddhava, remember Krishna. The pastimes. And they had said that Krishna killed many wizards. A wizard means like a magician. And in Sanskrit it's called Mayin. Mayin. Because Maya is like a mystical energy illusion. Some Mayin is someone who can have, make illusions. So and uh, it said that these Mayins, they transformed into demons and animals to fight with Krishna. But these are wizards. So Agasura, this cave demon, a snake demon, is a wizard, someone who transformed his body into a body of a huge snake and was like huge the, and it had an open mouth and the upper lip or part of the mouth was in the sky. Right? Very big <laughs> and very long, very long. So the cowboys run inside and have fun and this and that and Krishna looks and says, oh, what can I do now? This is this demon. Actually, it was the brother of Putana. Right? Is the you understand? Brother of Putana and of uh, and, uh, Trinavarta? No, not Trinavarta, of, of the another one. Who was it? A second one. Yeah. So, and he wanted to have revenge because Krishna killed Putana, right? The witch. Oh, the, it was feeding the Yeah, it was yeah, feeding was Krishna, him. exactly. Yeah. So, he was wanted to kill. And he was then, of course, an associate of Kamsa. So anyway, and, and so the, 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 he had his mouth still open because he saw, ah, this Krishna is not inside, he's still outside, I have to wait when he comes and then I will, you know, kill everyone. So Krishna said, oh, what shall I do? Then okay, I just run inside, let's see. So immediately when Krishna was inside, run, he closed his mouth and he said, oh, everyone died. The coward boys died. But Krishna, of course not. And it's that he expanded himself because at that, in this past time, Krishna was very small, small boy, a couple of years old, like a small cow boy. But he expanded himself, became really big. Imagine a huge Krishna. <laughs> that was huge because this demon was big too. And so the demon, he could not breathe anymore. He suffocated. And when it died, out of his head, there came the soul came out. And the soul was, soul was standing, hovering above this demon. It was flying. It was light. You know? It was glowing. And then Krishna looked on his friends and they came to life again. And then they go out. And then when the soul of Agasura sees Krishna come out, huh? goes into Krishna. So, so this is the, the pre-story to that what we want to read now. Because when this happened, the demigods, the, the suras, the demigods, they saw this. Because this demon, Agasura, was a big problem for the demigods. It was very powerful and they couldn't do anything. And now he's dead. So the demigods are very, very happy and they see, oh, Krishna killed this Agasura. And they, what, what do demigods do? They make a, a shower of, of flowers. So flowers falling from the sky, smelling good in the colors. And they celebrate, they have musical instruments, and the Gandharvas dance, and the Apsaras, Apsaras, these heavenly girls dance, and the Gandharvas sing, and everyone's, oh, wonderful, wonderful, demon is dead. Hmm? So this uh, region of the demigods is called Svarga. Huh? We are on Bhumandala, Bhulok, means uh, earthly planets. Then you have Bhuva, and then you have Svarga. So it's very high, actually, and very 
um, very elevated platform where they live demigods, of course, right? And we are just humans. So, but much above them, because then after this you have Sva, and then you have this Chandaloka, Tapaloka, Mahaloka, Mahaloka, Chandaloka, Tapaloka. And up, what is on the top? It's called Satyaloka. The highest planetary system in the universe. And there lives Brahma. Brahma is the first living entity in the universe. He's the engineer of the universe. He's the creator God. He lives as long as the universe. He's the most powerful in one sense. Shiva is a little bit more powerful, especially, but he is amongst this is most powerful living entity in the universe. His body is not made of matter. It's also not made of spirits. It's something in between. It's made of subtle matter. It's made of intelligence. Imagine you have a body made of intelligence. Very mystical being. And it says he has four faces or heads. That's called, uh, why it's, he's called Chatur Mukha Brahma. Chatur means four and Mukha means faces. For all the directions. But it's not like ugly looking. It's very beautiful. It says it's very beautiful. So when Brahma was up there in this region and he heard down there in Svarga, right? Everyone is celebrating. He said, oh, what's, what's going on there? What's the commotion? And he found out Agasura is dead. And he said, oh, how was he killed? He said, yeah, a cowherd boy killed him. He said, a cowherd boy? How can a cowherd boy kill Agasura, not even the demigods could kill him. Yeah, they say he's the Supreme Lord. He's Narayan. Because Brahma, he worships Narayan, Vishnu. He said, my Lord, my Lord is here. And he looks and he sees a coward boy. And then when he looks at them, he sees a situation. Because this after the coward boys killed Agasura, they went back in the forest, they run around and they take uh, breakfast. Now they take prasadam after... It's always like this. Krishna goes in the forest, they just play, then they kill a demon, and then they take prasad. <laughs> Krishna, every day. Yeah, every day. Huh? Krishna is always fun. Right? Krishna, this is, this is fun. So then um, uh, Brahma sees now when they take prasadam. And it's so nice. They sit together, the cowherd boys, with their Krishna. Every cowherd boy thinks it's my Krishna. This is the supreme platform. And think, this is my Krishna. You love Krishna so much, it's your, Krishna is yours. Complete love. So they sit and it's just one Krishna, but he has this mystical power. He can appear to be with you and alone with you. So the card boys were sitting and it said Krishna was, it was like a lotus flower. It looked like a lotus flower and Krishna was in the center of the lotus flower and all the skopas were sitting around and were taking prasadam and looking at Krishna and Krishna was looking at them, at each and everyone. Everyone thought, he's giving me attention. Huh? This is the spiritual world. We are there with, with Krishna like this. And they took prasadam and they shared prasadam. And it's not just that the characters are only looking at Krishna. They have also relationships between each other. It's a very important factor. Even though everyone is completely Krishna conscious, they have also relationships amongst each other. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, Mandu Mangal has a relationship with Krishna, of course, but also with um, Sudam or Sridam or Subal or Arjuna. There's a Gopa, his name is Arjuna. It's not the Arjuna from the battlefield, it's the Gopa Arjuna. Maybe it's the expansion of, maybe his expansion is the Arjuna on the battlefield, but this I don't know. Maybe we have to ask the esoteric devotees like Bhakta Lucas. Bhakta Lucas. Do you know if the Gopa Arjuna has some relationship with the Arjuna, the battlefield of Kurukshetra? I don't know. He says, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but this is what we do when we don't know something. We ask someone, we think he knows. And if he doesn't know either, he says, I don't know. We are not afraid of saying, I don't know. Because I'm just, oh, I think and this and that, right? We always want to know something. It's the disease of the conditioned soul. All wants to pretend I know something. It's cheating. No, sometimes we don't know. Okay. So the Gopas have a relationship with each other too. And they take prasadam. So Brahma sees this. How they take prasadam. And I say, this is my Lord? This is God? Many people when we present Krishna, they say, oh, 
this is God? How can this be? God, right? The, just a coward boy. Yeah, this is what it is. This is who he is. So, and now he, this is what we read now. What happens now? So I read this first verse of this chapter 13. It's very interesting. Chapter 13 of Srimad Bhagavatam is the last chapter Srila Prabhupada translated. It's the last. And he translated this on his deathbed. This Prabhupada was speaking when he was... We don't say this in, in connection to Prabhupada, but to make it drastic, when he was dying. Of course, he doesn't die. Nobody dies, just leaves the body. But it's amazing that what Prabhupada was speaking in the last moments. And this is what he was speaking. Shri Shukavacha Sadhu Prishtam Mahabhaga Tvaya Bhagavatottama Yanutanaya Shishasya Shrinvana Pikatamuhu. Srila Shukadiv Goswami said, O best of devotees, most fortunate Parikshit, you have inquired very nicely, for although constantly hearing the pastimes of the Lord, you are perceiving his activities to be newer and newer. Purport. Unless one is very advanced in Krishna consciousness, one cannot stick to hearing the pastimes of the Lord constantly. Nityam navanavayamanam. Even though advanced devotees hear continually about the Lord for years, they still feel that these topics are become, coming to be to them as newer and fresher. Therefore, such devotees cannot give up hearing of the pastimes of Lord Krishna. The word santaha is used to refer to persons who have developed love for Krishna. Yang shyama sundara machintya guna swarupam govindam adi purusham tamahang bhajami. Brahma Samhita 538. Parikshit March therefore is addressed as Bhagavadottama, the best of devotees, because unless one is very much elevated in devotional service, one cannot feel ecstasy from hearing more and more and appreciate the topics as ever fresher and newer. Very interesting. So Prabhupada starts his purpose with saying, unless one is very advanced, he cannot stick to hearing the pastimes. He will not experience this as newer and newer. So I would assume we are not very advanced. So it's not so easy to listen to the pastimes. But we can learn. And how do we learn? In hearing the pastimes. We learn to hear the pastimes in hearing the pastimes. Meaning the, uh, that what we want to attain is at the same time is, is the, the medicine. Right? It's interesting. So... Um, yeah, so that's the reason why we should hear. And Par Parikshit Maharaj, he was hearing, you have to imagine, s seven days. Imagine. Imagine now you stay here, seven days, and hearing what I will speak. <laughs> if I do it nicely, then it will be not so difficult. <laughs> not such a drag, but still, right? So Shukadev Goswami was the perfect speaker of the Bhagavatam. It was just an, an outpour of nectar what he was speaking. It was nectar, it came out of... Shukka means like par um, parrot. Shukka, it's the parrot. And what he was speaking is like nectar. And Parikshit Maharaj, he was drinking the nectar through the ears. And so he could hear seven days without sleeping, eating, drinking. He was just sitting and hearing about Krishna. Right? So Brahma says we have to be advanced. So we have to... So this is not anything, oh, I'm not advanced. I cannot hear about Krishna. No, now we should think, I want to be advanced. I want to hear about Krishna like this, without interruption. Hmm? We should think, oh, I want to be advanced. And when we have this desire, it will come very quickly. Because Krishna is very merciful. Krishna waits for our desire, and then he will fulfill the desire. It's amazing. So, this is the start. And now, second verse. I just read now translation. Paramahamsas, devotees who have accepted the essence of life, are attached to Krishna in the core of their hearts, and he is the aim of their lives. It is their nature to talk only of Krishna at every moment. 
as if such topics were newer and newer. They are attached to such topics, just as the materialists are attached to topics of women and sex. Interesting. Because this is what the materialists are all about. Especially sex life. This is the most wonderful thing for the materialists. That's the reason why you have everywhere it's all about sex. Everyone wants this. So, so everyone is so attached. Today I met a boy. I'm from Syria or something. And then he said to me, No, I am only interested in alcohol, Mariana and women. I said, Oh, <laughs> you're a poor person. Right? So, but anyway, the point is very attached. And imagine you are, or we are, so attached to Krishna Kata as a materialist is attached to sex life. Wonderful. So a devotee is very uh, ecstatic. O king, kindly hear with great attention. Although the activities of the Supreme Lord are very confidential, no ordinary man being able to understand them I shall speak about them to you. For spiritual masters explain to a submissive disciple even subject matters that are very confidential and difficult to understand. Yeah? If we are eager to learn, if we have the right attitude, if we are humble, then Krishna will reveal knowledge to us. The Guru will speak to us, Krishna re re will reveal to us. We will get knowledge by reading Shastra. When we are proud, it's not then, after saving the boys and calves from the mouth of Agasura, right, who was death personified, Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, brought them all to the bank of the river and spoke the following words. So, this is what we said. Now he brings them out to the bank of the river and now he speaks to them. So, Krishna speaks to his friends now. My dear friends, just see how this river bank is extremely beautiful because of its pleasing atmosphere. And just see how the blooming lotuses are attracting, are attracting bees and birds by the aroma. The humming and chirping of the bees and birds is echoing throughout the beautiful trees in the forest. Also here the sands are clean and soft. Therefore this must be considered the best place for our sporting and pastimes. So imagine this place next to the river Yamuna. It's wonderful weather, not too hot, not too cold. Actually, a spiritual weather, it's the spiritual world, it's Krishna. Huh? Then you have the bees and the lotus flowers and the soft river bank. And Krishna says, oh, this is very nice for our pastimes. I think we should take our lunch here, since we are already hungry, because the time is very late. Here the calves may drink water and go slowly here and there and eat the grass. Picnic. It's a picnic. Krishna has a, who likes picnic? Everyone likes pic huh? Everybody. Everyone likes picnic, huh? Have something nice to eat and drink with good friends in the nature outside. You spread the blanket, you sit down, right? <coughs> yeah, you we can also grill. Yeah. Grill some some potatoes and zucchini and cheese. <laughs> but they were not grilling. They had the best prasadam or best food already there because Mother Yashoda Imagine Mother Yashoda makes some nice lunch for Krishna and the other mothers also for the coward boys yet. Best of the best. Accepting Lord Krishna's proposal, the coward boys allowed the calves to drink water from the river and then tied them to trees where there was green tender grass. Then the boys opened their baskets of food and began eating with Krishna in great transcendental pleasure. Like the hall of a lotus flower, right? I mentioned this before. Eh? Like a hall of a lotus flower, surrounded by its petals and leaves, Krishna sat in the center, encircled by lines of his friends, who are, all looked very beautiful. Every one of them was trying to look forward toward Krishna, thinking that Krishna might look toward him. In this way, they all enjoyed their lunch in the forest. Among their cowherd boys, some placed their lunch on flowers, some on leaves, fruits or bunches of leaves, some actually in their baskets, some on the bark of trees and some on rocks. This is what the children imagined to be their plates as they ate their lunch. Nice, huh? 
All the coward boys enjoyed their lunch with great showing one another the different tastes of the different varieties of preparations they had brought from home. Tasting one another's preparations, they began to laugh and make one another laugh. So they ate and they said, oh, look what I have, oh, I'll taste this and taste this, and they were choking and laughing. Krishna's Yagya book, that is, he eats only offering of Yagya. But to exhibit his childhood pastimes, he now sat with his flute tucked between his waist and his tight cloth on his right side and with his horn bugle and cow driving stick on his left. You understand? He had his, his flute tucked in the side because Krishna plays the flute that was sticking there and a horn uh, bugle hmm? this horn, horn halt, no? auf Deutsch sagt man horn nicht ein Muschelhorn das ist um, mehr wie so von einem äh, Büffel also einfach das Horn von Büffel und dann brrr, kann man es mit Klang machen and uh, a stick for tending the cows hm? hier dann die alles halt Holding in his hand a very nice preparation of yogurt and rice with pieces of suitable fruit between his fingers, he sat like the wall of a lotus flower, looking forward toward all his friends, personally choking with them and creating jubilant laughter among them as he ate. At that time, the denizens of heaven were watching, struck with wonder, at how the personality of Godhead, who eats only in Yagya, was now eating with his friends in the forest. So the demigods were amazed when they saw this because they somehow knew he's the Lord, isn't that? And normally Krishna only eats because if you give yagya, like when you offer prasadam, you have to be clean, it has to be clean, prepared, and only brahmanas, like this, a ritual. But here the coward boys, like some boys, they give, oh, Krishna, here, eat. And Krishna eats. Because it's love. Ro love uh, transcends this... Uh, Vaidi in that sense. Huh? This, is not this is not necessary anymore. Formality is not necessary if you love Krishna. Like in any relationship, right? In, in any relationship, if there's real love between the two, there is no need for formality. It's just a hindrance. You don't say to your husband, oh, schönen Tag, Herr Kommerzialrat. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Commercial <laughs> sounds very official. <laughs> no, you say something different, right? So, O March Parikshit, while the coward boys who knew nothing within the core of their hearts but Krishna were thus engaged in eating their lunch in the forest, the calves went far away, deep into the forest, being allured by green grass. So during they took prasadam, it was choking, it was fun. Suddenly, the, slowly, the cows, they were, you know, how cows do, they eat here and there, and they always search for green grass, and they went far away and somehow in the forest, and suddenly they were gone. You know, these cows are very beautiful. You know, these Indian cows? It's very beautiful. I was now in Mayapur, also, and so many cows. Actually, the Goshala of the Iskon Temple in the Mayapur is very nice. Such beautiful cows. And they all look different. You can see their personalities. They all look a little different. And they are very elegant and they have this long and they are more slim, right? Here our cows, they are like fat, you know, they have fat heads. Often, especially in Holland, they, uh, um, they cross the uh, cows with pigs yeah, because to get more fat. And, yeah, and they look really, they look also like that. Ugly, ugly. And our ours also look different, but there the cows are very slim and have long this uh, schnauze hmm? and big dark eyes and long ears, right? You have these long ears and you flap the ears <laughs> always like this. <laughs> you know how the Indian cows look. They're very, very, very beautiful. Very beautiful. So no wonder why Krishna loves the cows so much and give them milk and all this. It's just a wonderful animal. So, so now the cows go away during the gopas eat. When Krishna saw that his friends, the coward boys, were frightened, the fierce control, he, the fierce controller, even of fear itself, said just to mitigate their fear, My dear friends, do not stop eating. I shall bring your calves back to this spot by personally going after them myself. 
So the cows were gone, and the group was saying, Oh, our cows are gone, our cows are gone. They're afraid. Oh, how is this possible? Our cows are gone. He said, like, Don't worry, just keep on eating. I will get the cows back. He is very concerned about his devotees. Also, he knew what will happen now, what will come now. So let me go and search for the calves, Krishna said. Don't disturb your enjoyment. Then, carrying his yogurt and rice in his hand, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, immediately went out to search for the calves of his friends. To please his friends, he began searching in all mountains, mountain caves, bushes and narrow passages. So Krishna left and he had still this yogurt and rice in his hands. So it's not sad, but maybe he was eating in between, looking for the oh, why is he carrying the this prasada? So and he looks where are the cows probably called them, they all have names. He knows all the names of the cows. Oh where are my cows? <laughs> so he looks everywhere. So now it's a long verse. So now it's very it's, it starts to become exciting what will happen now. O Maharaj Parikshit, Brahma who resides in the higher planetary system in the sky, had observed the activities of the most powerful Krishna in killing and delivering Asura, and was astonished. Now that same Brahma wanted to show some of his own power and see the power of Krishna, who was engaged in his childhood pastimes, playing as if with ordinary cowherd boys. Therefore, in Krishna's absence, Brahma and became entangled, for in the very near future he would see how powerful Krishna was. So Brahma, he saw everything and he, what he wants to do now, he wants to test Krishna. This is what he wants, he wants to see the power of Krishna. If this is my Lord, then he must, uh, maybe he was expecting that he's not the Lord. Because if he thinks more is the Lord, he wouldn't dare to do this, actually. So he was kind of thinking, ah, no, this cannot be. So I make something and then I will see how he can, I will bewilder him. And then, huh? so he thought, maybe it's him, but I, I don't think so. So, I, so he makes some weird thing. Actually, this Leela, the Sanskrit name of this Leela, because every Leela is a name. He is of course called uh, Brahma steals the boys and calves, but in Sanskrit it's called Brahma Vimohana Leela. Is the name. Vimohan means bewilderment, bewilderment of Brahma. So he wants to see how powerful is Krishna. Thereafter, when Krishna was unable to find the calves, he returned to the bank of the river, but there he was also unable to see the coward boys. So he comes back, he, he looks for the cow, cows and he couldn't find the cows. They are like gone. In German, they say, spurlos verschwunden. Spurlos, spurlos means like there's no, a spur means like footsteps or something or some incident. But spurlos means there is no indication where they could have gone, like disappeared, right? So he comes back now to the bank, river bank and suddenly the boys are gone, all of them. Nobody there. When Krishna was... Yeah, so he could suddenly, okay, when Krishna was unable to find the calves and their caretakers, the coward boys anywhere in the forest, he could suddenly understand that this was the work of Lord Brahma. So it said suddenly understand, but Krishna is all knowing, knows everything. But it's very interesting, Yoga Maya, you know Yoga Maya, you heard about Yoga Maya? There's Maha Maya, Maya means the material energy which bewilders us, so that we think we're the material body, we forget Krishna all this. This is called Mahamaya. And of course, there is no Mahamaya in the spiritual world because everything is knowledge there. No? Satchit Ananda. No? This is complete truth. There's no Maya. There's no Mahamaya. But there's a different Maya. It's called Yoga Maya. And not an, another illusion. And this illusion works, especially in Vrindavan, that all the devotees forget again that Krishna is God. Right? In the material world, we don't know that Krishna is God. And in Vrindavan, they also don't know that Krishna is God. But it's the real illusion, it's the higher uh, reality. And so they can love him more. It's called Yoga Maya. And Yoga Maya, this means she's putting everyone in the illusion to think, oh, I'm Krishna's girlfriend. 
Oh, I'm Krishna's friend. Oh, I'm Krishna's mother. It's good. Yoga Maya. And also Krishna is in Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya people is also Krishna that he thinks I'm a coward boy and I play with my friends and I go home and uh, eat some prasadam with my, for my mother and see it. Huh? But Yoga Maya is not controlling Krishna. She serves Krishna like this because Krishna wants this. Right? So in that sense we can see, also understand this Yoga Maya that he is, oh where are my cow cows this and that and then he, oh it must be Brahma. But it's not a lack, it's not ignorance. It's Yoga Maya helping Krishna to have experience, have adventure. Like children. When we were children, how many fantasy worlds were we not creating? Isn't it? Yeah, you are in the big bed of your parents and this is the ship. You are with your brother, sister and your small boys or girls. And then we are on the ship and this is now, this is the sea and the sharks and we are on the ship and oh, don't jump in the water or something like this. We are playing or not. And we enjoy this being on, oh, a shark, watch out, there's a shark coming, right? We enjoy this. So this is why, why do we, are we doing this? Because Krishna does that. Krishna wants to have adventure and fun all the time. But if he's like, I am God, I'm the Supreme, I know everything, I'm not afraid, I have no uh, attachment, I have nothing, what can he enjoy? So Yoga Maya comes and helps him that he can have adventures. So Yoga Maya is an expansion, is an energy of him and serves him. So it's not something different because there's only Krishna existing, but these are all aspects and emanations of Krishna uh, that he has a huge variety that he can have experience and fun and adventure. So thereafter, just to create pleasure both for Brahma and for the mothers of the calves and cart boys, Krishna, the creator of the entire cosmic manifestation, expanded himself into the calves and the covered boys and the boys. So that means Krishna comes out of the forest after not finding the calves. The covered boys are gone. And now, hmm, what's going on here? And then, ah, I know it's Brahma. Brahma, he stole the cows and he stole my friends. He wants to trick me. He wants to test me. So I will show him now who is really powerful. And he, this small Krishna cowherd boy, expands himself in this boys and in the cows. Krishna takes on the shape of the cows and of his friends. But not like, uh, what is it called, like machines or something, or not like, uh, what is it, clones. No, every cowherd boy has like an individual uh, appearance and he was perfect like this right? and also the cows so now what Krishna does he has all the cow his cow boys are there he and the cows and now he goes back to Vrindavan so the cow boys or he as cow boys goes back home to their parents to his parents to their families the cows in the shed and when the mothers see their boys they love them immediately so much like never before because in Vrindavan, everyone loves Krishna. Everyone loves Krishna. But suddenly, they love their own children as Krishna. And they are all, all bewildered. How come? It's not that they normally don't they love them also, but still, Krishna is more, right? But suddenly, they love them so much. And I will not read now all the verses, because later I will summarize it now and just tell the story. So they were living together for one year. Right? For one year they were living together, Krishna, as coward boys and as calves. And the whole Rindavan was extremely ecstatic. Because everyone had Krishna without really knowing it. And one point when the um, cowherd boys went out with the calves. And the cowherd men were on Govardhan Hill with the older cows. Because the cowherd boys have the small, they have the calves, and the men, they have the big cows. And the cows are on the Govardhan hill, and they look down and see their calves. And they see their calves, and suddenly, they are spontaneously attracted to their calves, and they run down the Govardhan hill, and said they run so fast, like, you know, that their uh, rear legs were touching their front legs. They were like, really like... <laughs> Because they saw the calves. And normally a cow loves the calf. But if the calf 
is Krishna. This love is like unimaginable. They were like crazy. They were running downhill. And the coward men, they were angry. Because where are they running? And we, were, we didn't want to go here. And when the calves see now the, the mothers, they will drink the milk. And actually these are the medium calves. So they are not supposed to drink the milk anyway. So they ran also down and they were angry. Stop, 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 stop. And the cow cows came to the calves and they were licking the calves. And they were like loving the calves because it's Krishna. This is the soul is loving Krishna. This is what prema is. Love. Prema. Okay. No? Prema. Bhav. Hmm? So, and the, and the cow boy ran also down. They were angry. And when they saw their boys, their sons, Immediately the, the anger disappeared because it's also Krishna. They, our children, and they ch hug the children. And it said the father, when he loves the child, he smells the head of the child. In the Vedic times, it was done somehow. This is an act of affection. They were smelling the head of the ch of their boys and they were hugging them. So this was a very intense emotional scene. And Balaram was there, standing a little bit apart from this, and he saw this. He said, What's going on here? Balaram was like, what's that? And he was thinking, are they, these are not our calves and these are not the cowherd boys. This, maybe some demon came and bewildered everyone, but he said, no, that cannot be. This is Vrindavan, and it's protected by Krishna. Balaram did not know. Krishna was not letting him know. It's very interesting. And then he figured, maybe Krishna has something to do with this. And he said, then he went to Krishna and said, what's going on here? And Krishna explained to him, yeah, one year ago, right, we were on the end and Brahma came and I, yeah, I expanded myself. And Balaram, oh, that's how it is. So in the meantime, Bal uh, Brahma, because he took the cowherd boys into a cave and he put them in some mystical slumber. So they were sleeping. The cows also were sleeping. So he um, did this and he went for a very short moment. But then he became mental. He said, oh, oh if, if this is really Krishna, like, you know, I probably should not do this. I better go back. And for Brahma, a small moment, because he lives for trillions of years. He, 600 trillion years, he, his life is. So his time is different. Time is relative. And on the higher planets, it runs differently. So what is for them just a small moment is for here long is for us a long time. Like ants and humans, right? For us, one year is a lot, but for ants, it lives one year. Or you call them Eintags fliegen, one day flies. You know, they get born in the morning, they die in the evening. You know, the whole life in 24 hours. So we are like ants in comparison to the demigods, to devas and to Brahma. So what was for him just this short moment and he became mental, oh, maybe I was doing something wrong, was for, for, for us, what was one year, one whole year. So he comes back and now he becomes bewildered because he wants to bring back the cows and the calves, but he sees they are there because Krishna expanded himself. Says, All the cow boys, boys are here, the calves are here. Is this possible? I took them in this cave. I put them in a the cave. What's going on here? And the point is that when you have knowledge as Brahma, you cannot be bewildered. You can see a, what is it? A, a, the original and its, its a copy, right? Because he's so intelligent, you cannot trick him in the material world, so to say. He would see that's just a copy. But Krishna was expanding so perfectly, Brahma could not see the difference. So he went back to the cave and looked, oh, there they are lying. The cowboys boys are here. And then he went back and said, but here they are also. And he could not understand what's going on. He couldn't see it. And he became so bewildered, which is impossible for Brahma. Because Brahma is the most intelligent person in the universe. You cannot bewilder Brahma. He stands above it like Adult, right? The child cannot trick the adult. He knows more. He can do whatever. He has superior intelligence. No? So suddenly Brahma experienced something what he never experienced before. He is bewildered. And it was a shock for him. He was so shocked. He was, oh, 
what's going on is like error, error, eh, 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 you know, the system, like a computer, and you put so much data inside, it uh, hangs, hangs itself. <laughs> so Brahma was, his intelligence was hanged. Yeah, and then Krishna is in front of him. He says, oh, Brahma, what's going on with you? And Krishna puts something on top. Because then all these coward boys and calves are there, and Krishna shows that these are all his expansions, and they transform into Vishnus with four arms. So this small coward boy, but Krishna was not transforming into Vishnu. He was still coward boy, Nanda, Kumara, Krishna. And but all these calves were like transforming this huge Vishnus, majestic and powerful. And Krishna, small coward boy, was saying like, you know, these are all my expansions, right? This is all my magic, my power. And when Brahma saw it, he was like, oh my God, oh my Krishna, oh my Krishna, oh my Vishnu, what was I doing? And he fell on the floor and offered obeisances, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And he said, ah, it's, 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 it's all right, it's all right. So then the coward boys came back and the whole thing was dissolved. But it's a very powerful scene then, right? When because Krishna normally doesn't show power. Okay, he fights and this and that. But when Krishna fights, especially outside of Rindavan, also in Rindavan, it's Vasudev Krishna. It's not, it's not um, Gopa Kumar Krishna. It's not Nanda Nandana Krishna. It's not Yashoda Nandana Krishna. It's not Gopinath. Because Krishna is always enjoying with his friends. But when he kills a demon, it's this expansion, Vasudev expansion. So he himself is never into this uh, Aishwarya, I'm powerful, I'm God or something. So these were his expansions. So, uh, but this is to show the whole world and all the Hindus who are bewildered by so many scriptures of demigods and this Shiva and Kali and Durga and all are God or no one is God and everything is one, right? This is Hinduism. It's called Hinduism. A hodgepodge and misunderstanding. But we have to read Shastra, we have to read Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam, Amala Puranam, it's the supreme scripture. And you have this pastime that even Brahma, the supreme person, is bewildered by Krishna. And Krishna shows himself, I am the supreme Lord. As he says in Bhagavad Gita, Aham sarvasya prabhavomata sarvam pravartate, iti madva bhajantimang buddha bhavasamanvitaha. From me all the material and spiritual worlds emanate, everything comes from me. Right? This is what Krishna says. And the wise who understand this, they worship me with all their heart. So Krishna is the Supreme Lord. You know, there's Gopa, Kavad boy in Vrindavan. This is Srimati Radharani, there's Gopas, there's Mada, all this. It's the Supreme Lord. Yeah? And Brahma could see this. And this Leela is called Brahma Vimohana Leela. Bewildering, bewildering of, uh, bewilderment of Brahma. Right? Because he's most intelligent. Nobody can bewilder Brahma, only Krishna. Because he's more powerful, he's more supreme, he's the highest. And Brahma is his devotee, Mahajan. The Mahajan. Yeah. So this is this 13th chapter. So there it is very nice explained, nice purport, especially Prabhupada. And this was the last Prabhupada was translating shortly before he left this world. This Lila. Very beautiful and very nice purports. We could only read a little bit, but when you read this, is very beautiful. Very ecstatic. So as Prabhupada says, when we are very advanced, we can listen to Krishna Kata all the time. And then become Krishna Kata. And then we fall in love with Krishna. The whole purpose of hearing Krishna Kata is to fall in love with Krishna. The more we hear about Krishna, you think more and more, oh, he's so nice. He's so beautiful. He's so wonderful. He's so amazing. He's great. And you start like in Krishna. And the more you like him, it becomes love. And then it's pure love. And then you cannot live with Krishna. And you think all the time about Krishna. As Prabhupada says here, like a materialist, he thinks about his lover. Like Romeo and Juliet, right? Romeo is always thinking about Juliet. And Juliet always thinking about Romeo. This is just a small reflection of the original love of the cho soul, the Chiva, and the supreme soul, Krishna. The, every, the soul always thinks about Krishna. And Krishna always thinks about his devotees. It's a two-way relationship. Okay. And thank you very much for your attention. you listening to this wonderful pastime of our dear Krishna. Thank you very much. 
Grantara Chima Bhagavatam ki jai, Jai. Prabhupada ki jai, Jai. Brahma Vimohana Lila ki jai, Nitai Kaur Premanande. Do you have a question? Do you have a question? Yes. Yes, okay. Why did demons are so stupid fighting with Krishna, even though what? demons are so stupid fighting with Krishna, even though they're knowing that Krishna is going to destroy them? No, they don't know. They don't know. They didn't know that this boy is Krishna. Mm-mm. Demons don't know that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. Sometimes they know a little bit, sometimes they think, but most of them don't really know. So Himsa didn't know that Krishna, this boy, is incarnate? Kamsa? Kamsa, yeah. No. No, he heard something. He, he was thinking always about Krishna, but he was not really aware. But this is also the Leela, right? If they would know perfectly well, then of course they are devotees. Sometimes they have lots of, like Hiranyakashipu, he knows a lot that Vishnu is the Lord, isn't that? But he wants to kill Vishnu. He says, I will kill Vishnu, I will cut his head and drink his blood. And he knows that Vishnu is the Lord of the demigods. But he doesn't really know what it means to be God and transcendent. He's so puffed up, they are so illusioned. Right? So and he and Krishna Leela also, they don't really know, they want to fight with Krishna. And Krishna is also not coming as Vishnu and the Lord and like this. He's coming as a coward boy, as a prince actually, and then living in Dwaraka and all this. He's pretending to be one of us. He plays, he's really also not making it easy for the demons to respect him because he, no, I'm also a king, I'm just a human being, right? He's not, better be careful, I'm the Supreme Lord, and if you want to fight with me, you make offenses. He's a little bit, he's interesting. No, no, yes, yes, I'm a king, and ah, what do you have to say? You want to fight with me? Okay, let's fight. <laughs> this is very interesting. But he warns in Bhagavad Gita, he says, Avachananti man mudha manushim tanum ashitam parang bhavama chanatum mamabhuta maheshwaram. He says, fools deride me when I descend in this seemingly human form. They deride me. They don't know that I'm the supreme lord of all living entities. This is Muda, so fools. So because actually the devotee, they, they know that he's the Lord and they are very, they are loving him. They would never dare to fight with him. But even though they fight with Krishna, they make advancement. Because any contact with Krishna is very good. And Krishna, like Putana, she wanted to kill him, but she was behaving as a mother. And he took this good quality and she, he liberated her. He brought her in the spiritual world, in the position of a mother. A, a, a mother. Yeah. Right? So, but in general, the, the, the demons are in, in illusion. So these, but also, I have to say, the demons in the Lila are a little special. Because their connection with Krishna and there is a little special. But like demons, in general demons, they are in illusion, completely in illusion. Yeah. Okay? But the demons still exist. <laughs> yes, of course, there are many demons. Many. I saw today at least 200,000 demons. In Stavros? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Maybe 500,000 demons. You know? And a couple of them took books. So now they're. So soon there are no demons anymore. Right? They will be transformed. Demonic behavior. Demonic behavior. But they are also real demons. Danavas, Taityas. They are Rakshasas, they are also there. Special Nagas, these demons are also, they exist still, of course. And they visit our system? <laughs> I mean, Maybe, is... yes. They are not so obvious anymore like in other ages, but they have some influence in the world. It's Kali Yuga, it's the age of the demons, they, for sure. They cannot act in the public because they respect or have to respect the law of uh, uh, free will and uh, so the, the age doesn't allow that the demons come down, kill everyone or subjugate the uh, planet or something, right? This is uh, that they cannot do because they know it's very sinful to just, you know, be uh, uh, like this um, unfair, right? Um, yeah. And they fight normally demigods, they're not so interested in 
But they want to control the planet. That's what they do with all the systems. This and that infiltrate the systems. This is definitely demonic. And who knows how far demonic it goes up there. Who is behind these governments and secret governments and secret, 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 this and that. And who is behind it. And they are, because they are doing demonic yagyas. It's known that the, the high elite of the world, they're doing demonic yagyas. They worship demons. And Satanism and all this, it's very dominant, uh, prevalent there. And it works. So they get some Shakti from them, and then they should be. You can see how demonic governments are and everything. It's not doing good for the people. There's a demonic inspiration there. Definitely. Okay. Srila Prabhupada K. Nitai Gorbremanande. Srila Prabhupada Ki.